everyone, this is Tammy at Snowstorm Crafts and welcome. So today I want to share with you guys three fast and easy quilting designs that we can do. And I have my squares here that I sandwiched. I just did a backing, a middle batting, and then a quilted top part, just a sewn top. And what we're going to do today is quilt them. And I'm going to show you guys three different designs that you can use and do that are pretty easy just on the top of your quilts. So first thing I want to say is before you even start, just make sure you have a quilting needle in. Those That'll help a lot. And I like to use like a 90. And then we're going to add our walking foot. So I'm going to go ahead and pop my walking foot on here and we will get started. All right, so I went ahead and got my walking foot on here and what the walking foot will do, it'll grab all three layers and evenly pull it through at the same time as we're quilting. So it is best to have a quilting foot on. All right, and then like I said, you can have a quilting needle like up to 90 or you could just do a top stitch needle. That'll work nicely too. And first thing before you even start with your quilt is to do a test piece. So just layer up a test piece and run it through and make sure your tension is fine. And then uh, if it's just, if every, everything's good, then go ahead and just go from there. So what I'm going to start with is that these are not pinned together or anything like that. So you're going to want to either take some uh, safety pins and pin them together. You can either do a heat and bond, which is great, which I will be doing on one of the other panels. So I have two here that just have the batting. Just the regular batting and i'll show you what i'm going to do with those but um, i'm going to do one that's a heat and bond which is just fusible so you can just iron it on and uh, i'll try to put this down on my amazon link so you guys can check it out what i'm going to do with these panels is i'm going to take some of the basting adhesive here that i have and i'll make sure to put this in my links too if you guys want to check this out this makes it really nice too is you could just take it and i suggest to go into an open air like out in the outside or something uh, or make sure you're ventilated where you're at and I'm going to go ahead and just spray, just do a little bit of spray and I'll uh, take you guys outside on, on the back porch and I'll show you guys how I do it. So I'm just going to do a quick little spray on the front to tack it down and then on the back. And then it'll be all stuck together and ready to quilt. All right, so I got you all set up out here and what we're going to do is take our spray and I like to... Go ahead and fold it like that in half, and we'll just do half at a time. And then press it. Okay, and we'll do the other half. And then just make sure you guys have it somewhere you don't mind it getting all sticky. Because this is just an old, I usually uh, do gardening or something on it, or the kitty lays on it, so it might be a little hairy, but that's okay. That's okay. So that's it. So you just do a little spray. It's just so much easier. Even when you have big projects, just get to the middle like that and just do a quick tacking spray. Make sure it's lined up. Okay. And then just press it. We'll do the same thing over here. And this just works great. Okay. So that's it. It's as easy as that. I'm going to do the same thing to the other one and we'll start quilting. So this is my heat and bond. And this is the panel I want to adhere it to. So what I'm going to do, and I don't mind all these little loose strings and threads. I mean, it doesn't bother me because it's going to be hidden unless it shows through on the front of your work then you want to trim them but other than that i'm not worried about it so i've got my ironing board and the iron heating up you take the bumpy side there's some bumpy side and then the smooth side so i'm doing the bumpy okay and i'm going to just line it up because the uh, actual bumpy side is glue that when you heat up, it'll stick to it. Okay. And then you just press. 
Make sure your iron is like on cotton high. I just have it on cotton. And then you just press it. There's no need to just iron it back and forth or nothing. Just kind of press it down and then you can see that it, when it starts sticking, that you know that it's working. So I'm going to continue doing that and just get it pressed to it. And we'll go from there. So everything is ironed down. I got the batting here, the heat and bond all ironed on and ready to go. So now if you wanted to do a backing piece of fabric on it, like I did my other ones, you could do the basting spray and then do it that way. You can pin it on. You can have it so you pin it on the front and uh, just do these quilting pins are great. They got a little curve in them. You guys can see that. So they curve like that. It just makes it really nice to uh, get them into your quilt tops with the little curve. So you can either do that. Um, I'm not putting anything on the back of this one because it will be. It's going to be a pillow top. So I'm making a pillow front with it, so the inside won't matter. If there's a backing or anything like that but those are some options if you wanted to put a backing on it i also wanted to say after you iron the back and get it on go ahead and flip it over and you can iron the front down just to get it extra stuck on there so that won't hurt it so just go ahead and flip it and then just do a quick iron just to make sure to get any wrinkles that were in the front or anything like that we have all of our little quilt tops here basted together and there was the three ways where you could do either the pins, spray, or heat and bond. Okay. So we got that. And then what we're going to do is for the first sew here, I'm going to show you guys how to make waves. So that's going to be the first one. So now, now you can either mark as you go, which you can use different things. You can do just a marking pencil that either you do the little brush on the end here. here I'll take it out. I just got this the other day just at my little local store. We have like a buy mart here. I don't know if you guys have that but over here in Oregon we got like a buy mart and it's just a little mart store so you can go get stuff and they have like a little sewing section. So that's what this is. It's a, uh, a dressmaker marking pencil is what it is. Okay, so you can either use, remove it with a brush, which is at the end here. So you can kind of just brush it off after you mark on it, or you can do it with a damp cloth. So like if you wanted to make marks on it, here, let me see that. And then kind of take that off. So, or you could just take a little damp cloth to get it off, but you can do that and mark it with wavy lines, or you can use a a friction pin which this is erasable with heat so as you mark on this you can just take your iron and it'll go, it should go away okay or it will go away <laughs> and then if you have darker fabrics you can use chalk or here's a fun little tip and trick here is you can use a sliver of soap so uh, just get it down and get the soap really thin you know as you use it and stuff and just dry it out and this works great like on darker fabrics and stuff you can just take it and do some marks on it like that and then it'll just come off so how fun is that just a little sliver of soap we all got something like that hanging around okay so those are fun little marking things that you could do if you want to but for this one i'm just going to do a waves just start with waves and do them about one to two inches apart and you don't have to get it perfect or anything that's the fun thing about it so i'm going to go ahead and start that don't have to be perfect 
and it quilts it together nicely. So I think that turned out really nice. And you can see I just did them just wavy all the way down, about one to two inches apart. No rhyme or reason, just however you want to do it. So it's kind of, it's really fun and relaxing to do. So let's do the next one. Okay, so correction. These are, and I'm sure I put it on the, when I edited it, I went ahead and put wonky instead of wavy. These are the wonky lines, not the wavy. So the wonky, you can see that they're just all, just whichever way. So that's the wonky is the first one we did. And I'll make sure to edit it at the beginning too to let you guys know. Okay, now we're going to do the wavy. Now we're going to do the wavy. So sorry about that. So what I'm going to do uh, for the wavy, now we're working on that one, is just start in the middle, work my way down, and then just about an inch or two inches apart, just uh, line it up as, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but just kind of line it up to right with it and work your way all the way to the end, an inch to two inches apart, then turn the quilt and then do it the other way. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do that, and now, now we're working on the wavy. So I'm all done with it. And you can see here that the wavy lines are definitely more uniform. I'm trying to move it so you guys can see. Like that. So they turned out really fun. The back you can't really tell. <laughs> Too many flowers. But you can see here in the front. So I think that turned out really cool. And I'll get pictures at the end that you guys can see. And I'll make sure you can get a good look at them but I mean that turned out really fun I really like it so it just did wavy lines all the way through so you can tell that one's a little more uniform and then this one's just a little more wonky so okay so those two are done and now we're going to do straight lines Okay, so with straight lines, a lot of people think that you can stitch in the ditch and it's going to be really easy and that's the easiest thing to do, which it's not at all. So like you have too much bulk in the middle. So when you're trying to stitch there, it goes wonky and goes other sides and uh, it just does not work out too good. So the best thing to do is go along the stitch that you, that's previously there along the seam. And then you can just go either a quarter inch out or even a half an inch out or so. Just pop it out as far as you want. You can even line up the foot. I like doing this where you can just line the foot up. You can line it up right to the side and then stitch down it and then do that down all of them and just follow the pattern. That's what I like to do like on these kinds of uh, just wonky. This is a, just a wonky square patch. I'll make sure to put this on the end screen if you guys want to see how I did this. I actually have a video on it, so I'll make sure to post that. And uh, so you could just follow and just do that with each little uh, pattern that you have and do straight lines like that, which is what I'm going to do. And then you can just line up your foot however you want. Like if I know that my foot's going to go like this and then I'm lining up just on the side right there, I'll just do that along. And if I want to go on the other side, but just however you want to do it, you could just do one straight line down each one of these. So however you want to do it, but just do it straight and then just line it up with the other seam. So that does help a lot to do that. Now there is another way to do it. Like if you're just doing straight lines going down a quilt, not on a pattern, you can definitely use one of these feet uh, guides right here. So you just add your guide to your foot Put it down in there, have it wherever you want, and you can measure it out like an inch at a, you know, like say it's in here, and I have it measured out with our little measuring tool here. And you can just go from the needle here and measure it out to the guide and just have it like that exactly how you do it every time. Tighten it down, 
And then when you sew, you just make sure to just line it up every time. So that's another way to do it, to do it perfect lines if you want. But if you have previous seams on here already stitched down, I just follow those. And then it just makes it super easy and it's really fun to do. So let's go ahead and continue that and see how these turn out. straight line uh, quilt top here is finished and I think this turned out really fun so you can see I just followed along here on all the lines so you just line up your foot however you want it and just keep it like that on each side and just it's just so much easier than going right into the ditch right here right into the seam line it's just so much harder so it's just easier to line up on the sides right that, like that. So there we go. So let's see, maybe you can see better with this angle like this. So this one's our wonky. Little recap here. This is the wonky lines. You can see that they're just like that. So we got the wonky. Then we got the wavy. We got the wavy lines that are a little more uniform, but they don't have to be perfect. And they're just kind of fun to quilt through. And then we got the straight lines. So there we go. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it informational. And if you could please subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and you guys will see my next video when I post it. Like, comment, and share, and let's grow together. And keep on crafting.